Hello everybody, my name is Nathan and welcome to The Bends. Today I'll be tying the Berry Boomba. It's a fly that I created after fishing Jeff Ching's Bloody Maria. One of the best shad flies I've ever used and I would say Jeff is the best shad fisherman in Sacramento, hands down. I gotta claim it. And so here we're tying on 136 denier thread in white. Tying it all the way back to where I find a good angle for the tail, but also create a sizable body. Now that I've found a good position for the tail, I'll wrap it starting with one very loose wrap another loose wrap and then a third wrap to really secure in the tail. Then I'll wrap the thread all the way forward to the bead head. You can also cut the thread before the bead head and it will line up flush. If it doesn't line up flush, that's no problem. You can fold the material back and create a tapered body. If you're worried that your wraps forward are not neat and you have material poking out, no worries. The flash will cover it all up. So now I'll be tying in the chartreuse wire in brassy. A trick that I like to use with the wire is to poke the wire ever so slightly into the bead head, making it easier to secure. Sometimes I'll even curve the wire as I wrap back with it, but in reality, the fish don't care and the flash will cover it up. Now I'm making a point to wrap my thread all the way down to the furthest point to create the start of a small to large taper. Next is tying in the blue and purple flash for the body. What I like to do is line up the tips as best I can, then cut it, and then also tuck these tip ends into the bead head. It makes it so much easier to tie in, especially since there are multiple pieces of flash. I guess this would be a great example of forgetting <laughs> your core techniques. So I think it's also important to adapt when things go wrong, such as this. Like right now I'm cringing at that tag end. But it's gonna get covered up, so no worries. Now I'm securing the thread. And the fun begins, time to wrap the body and the rib. So the trick to wrapping all these multiple strands of flash is to create tight tension. And what helps is creating a smooth body for the flash to wrap on. You might hear some squeaking sounds, which is the flash being taught by me pulling on it and if you ever have issues of the flash separating on the next wrap you can pinch clo as close as you can to the fly to bring it together wrap that over and the next one the next wrap will be tighter so now I'm wrapping back and then back to the head to create a, some sort of taper my favorite part about using multiple types of flashes and colors is that you can create some really interesting or cool effects. 
something that's a bit autonomous in this fly that I enjoy because you can't really tie the same fly. Now tying off the flash. The nice part about the state of the fly now is between the bead and the body there's a little slot for when you make your collar. This kind of slot prevents from building too much bulk behind the bead. So now to secure the thread again just because I don't want the flash to unravel which has happened many of times in the past so it's good to avoid those mistakes and to create even segmentation of the ribbing. I'll aim for six wraps of the wire and make sure to counter wrap the opposite direction of the flash and in doing so you're constricting the flash down with the wire in creating a much more durable fly because you want these to last long as you'll get many fish on one single fly. The trick to wrapping off the wire is to have secure thread wraps and then as you windmill it off pull down on the bobbin and it'll come out much easier. Lastly, we'll put on the shrimp pink UV dubbing and I'll add a little sliver of dubbing wax. Be aware if you use dubbing wax to not coat the body with a top coat or head cement as it will become cloudy and opaque. Now in adding the dubbing, a little goes a very long way. If you're having trouble getting the dubbing to stick to the thread or you're not using dubbing wax which is no problem either wrap or twist your fingers in one direction or back and forth one of those techniques will be able to suit the dubbing sticking to the thread so now as I apply the dubbing it looks a bit thick and so what I'll do is I'll slightly gently pull back on the dubbing and it'll thin out. Now that I'm liking how the fly is looking, I'll do three to four whip finishes, making sure I'm wrapping onto the bead and sliding the thread back, not trapping the dubbing under. I'll cut it as close as I can. And there you go. That is the Berry Bomba. This fly quickly became one of my favorites as the first shad I caught on it was a large female around 3 in the afternoon. It fishes really good in the evening and even when striped bass are following the shad in, I was lucky enough to catch my first striped bass with this fly and that is the Berry Bumba. Thank you so much for watching and so I have a lot of more content coming soon, fly tying videos, fly fishing, I went out to the river recently and spay videos coming soon, casting, troubleshooting, and so much more to come. So thank you again for watching. Best of luck on the water. Take it easy, y'all.